the Earl of Dartmouth, one minute and thirty. Before going any further, let's get one myth out of the way. There are many reasons why the Brexit referendum was won or lost. Nothing to do with Cambridge Analytica was in any way material. And we should not confuse sales talk from an old Etonian with reality. Nonetheless, hidden in this lengthy statement for debate, there is a very important, indeed vital issue. Let us start from the fact that Mr. Mark Zuckerberg is not as nice as he looks. Mr. Zuckerberg's approach to business has been well set out in the feature film The Social Network. And behind all the blather and misleading PR speak about the Facebook community, there is a gruesome reality. Facebook is a monopoly. It maintains its monopoly by a variety of predatory business practices. And one simple illustration is that Facebook buys up potential competitors. This is what it did, for example, with Instagram, Messenger, and WhatsApp. But there is more. Facebook makes its money. Let there be no misunderstanding. Facebook makes its money from selling data and advertising targeted from that data. Users do not have complete control over their Facebook data. And this cannot be good. And there is still worse. It emerged in the Washington hearings that Facebook has what it describes as shadow profiles on people who have not signed up to Facebook. And these profiles are without their consent. Such data does not get deleted when leaving because these people had never joined Facebook in the first place. In its methods of collecting data, Facebook has become like a virus that you can never get rid of. This is not only distasteful, it is entirely shocking. The conclusion is clear. The problem is not Cambridge Analytica. The problem is Facebook. And the emphasis on Cambridge Analytica and election manipulation is a distraction. As I said, the fundamental problem is Facebook itself the manner in which Facebook operates, its predatory business practices, its lack of eth eth ethical principles, its monopoly. In short, the monopoly that is Facebook needs breaking up. Thank you very much. Colleagues, we are facing a choice that concerns our civilization, our culture, and even democracy and liberty. There is only one way that we can escape from this. We have to change our economic model. Data belongs to those who provide that data. When people exploit that data without consent, then first of all they have to pay, and secondly, uh, well I believe um, if people use data without uh, consent, then the penalty for that has to be huge. Uh, it has to affect their turnover. We have to um, stop this economic model. I've proposed this in a report in this parliament. The parliament wouldn't even discuss my report. They wanted to rewrite it. This is absolute hypocrisy. If we don't want to change our economic model, which allows total domina domination, monopoly, and uh, undermines democracy, then you are hypocrites. We have to change the economic model uh, if you want to be credible. Uh, I am not uh, 100 uh, uh, happy that uh, by the fact that Zuckerberg uh, manages my personal data, but I do not trust you either when the EU which will deal with this uh, because I can always log out from Facebook, but I cannot log out from the EU bureaucracy. But we need to stop lying to ourselves. Brexit and other recent events are not caused by Facebook. It's because citizens need to be more aware. We should not be trying to censor any political players because that would damage our democracy much more than the unfair practices that we're trying to pre prevent. It is now clear that the Democratic Unionist Party used a data mining company, Analytica IQ, during the Brexit campaign. 
abusing the privacy of tens of thousands of Facebook users. The company has been called the backroom operation of Cambridge Analytica, the same outfit who helped elect Trump. Because it is based in Canada, Analytica IQ wasn't subject to the same electoral laws during the referendum. The Open Democracy website has found links between the companies and the Tories, the British military, the DUP and even Russian oligarchs. The, um, this isn't the first time that the DUP has paid flat, fast and loose with the law to pursue their dangerous pro-Brexit agenda. The DUP took almost half a million pounds in dark money from a secret source to manipulate opinion in London where they have zero votes and zero seats. And they then ensured transparency law that was not backdated to expose their CDDs. Chair, I just want to say that the DUP has no respect for rights, no respect for privacy and absolutely no regard for the damage that their reckless Brexit agenda is doing in Ireland. So, Thank you. Let me tell you millions, billions of people are on Facebook. It is powerful. Elections are in danger and our privacy is valuable. Madam President, I share the disgust of the public by the, at the abuses by Cambridge Analytica and the proper false propaganda that was peddled during the 2016 referendum. Have we gotten the wrong president in the White House? So we know that there has been fake news and misuse of Facebook data. Perhaps the Brexit vote might have been different. In each of these three million cases in Europe, this is already a crime, but it's even more serious if we take into account the potential consequences. One and a half million British citizens' data was violated as part of the Brexit campaign, and that was margin, is similar to the margin of votes that, that the Leave campaign won by. I think it's hard not to be worried. If one of the biggest decisions of European integration in the last few decades was influenced by a crime, then I think that there are consequences. You have the psychological profile of these people and to a detail that these people themselves are not even aware of. There are huge risks that may amount to election manipulation. European Parliament elections will take place next year and there is a real risk if Facebook gives access to Cambridge Analytica, then perhaps the Russian propagandists will be able to misuse data in a similar fashion. But it's also about democracy because fake news is a hybrid war of intoxication, manipulation, lies and hate speech aimed to weaken democracy through interfering in elections and enhancing populism and Europhobia. We may face an anti-European majority here and we must put limits uh, to the lies. Uh, the lies are as dangerous uh, as uh, national populism and uh, they usually use this as their instrument. Uh, we cannot overlook these issues at all. Sometimes it feels like we are living in a reality closer to that imagined by Orwell or Huxley than perhaps we would care to believe. This is an era where data is the new gold and where unscrupulous politicians and those who support them will use and abuse our personal information to make their propaganda appear as fact, to help swing elections and referenda, to essentially subvert democratic processes. Because this scandal is not only about misuse of data. This is about systems that were built for good being used against us. We need to ensure that elections and referenda that look free on the surface are actually so in reality. And I'll conclude, the links between the abuse of data and our democratic processes must be investigated. As Democrats, we need to recognise the true seriousness of this situation. Our democracies are being stolen by companies who use psychological techniques designed for situations of military conflict to sow division in our societies and distort electoral outcomes to the benefit of the rich and powerful. Those who think that the naive arguments for freedom of speech are sufficient imagine the media landscape as a fairy tale world of Hansel and Gretel. But the Cambridge Analytica scandal shows us that the forest is full of wolves. For many online today, the distinction between fake news and genuine news is increasingly blurred and this plays into the hands of those who wish to consolidate power. As Hannah Arendt said, the ideal subject of totalitarian rule is not the convinced Nazi or the convinced communist, 
but people for whom the distinction between fact and fiction and the distinction between true and false no longer exists. We're living in a world where social media are a must. You have to have Facebook and uh, that's been shown again and again. E-commerce has got data on millions and millions of users. I'm a Facebook user. Many of my colleagues in this room are almost certainly Facebook users. There are more Facebook users in Europe than there are in the US. And the social network might be based in this Silicon Valley, but it's active worldwide. And therefore, it also has responsibilities all across the globe. And I've said it before, and we'll repeat it again. Mark Zuckerberg has to come to the EP to answer our questions. And a simple apology will not do, and will also not do, if the commissioners now start to travel to the US and ask for audiences very nicely with Mr. Zuckerberg. That will simply not do. And of course, it's very worrying that one single tool can be so dominant on the market. And all of us know it can be a very annoying tool with all the ads and all the weird groups that you're being added to. But it's also, and we all know that, the best way, uh, probably the only way where you can stay uh, in touch with most of, the, of your friends because they are there. It's also the only place where you can share cat pictures with your grandmother. Nowhere else could you possibly do that. So we stay there. And despite the dramatic data leakages, despite the ads, despite all of that, we keep spending and wasting our time scrolling down our timeline. Facebook has become for many in Europe a necessity rather than a nice option. And that also means that Facebook has a huge responsibility. And so far, it has shied away from taking up this responsibility. It has ignored even most basic data protection rules. And that must be over once and for all. And it's our duty as European legislators to make sure that our citizens and their data is protected. It's our duty. They have put the trust in us, and we need to comply with that. Thank you. Cool.